In a previous video, I went over how to crack open a Chrome extension source code for any Chrome extension that you could find on the web store. We inspected the JavaScript, we looked at the network requests that were being fired, and we were able to see what was being sent in the request and received in the response. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. In this video, I'm going to show you how to protect your Chrome extension UI code and how this can apply to basically any UI code that you write in the future. Hi, I'm Jerry, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to protect your Chrome extension source code from prying eyes. Here's the thing, all that beautiful JavaScript that you've been writing, all that amazing HTML and CSS that's packaged in your Chrome extension, all of those are literally text files. The browser comes onto a web page, they see the JavaScript, they see the HTML and the CSS, and it gives it meaning. It knows how to process them, it knows how to interpret those commands, so it can show you the web page and it can give you that interactability. The fact is, anyone can view a page source or even in inspect your web page. There's nothing really stopping a user from being able to do so. You can attempt to disable right clicking or even highlighting or copy and pasting, but that just really hurts user experience and anybody who wants your source code is going to be able to inspect it very, very easily. That brings us to our first rule of protecting your Chrome extension or any UI code in general. Use an API. Put all of that fancy AI logic that you're writing into an API on a server that you can Control. When a user comes onto your web page through any kind of browser and performs a request like what is one plus one, that request is then sent to your API on a server that you control and only you have access to. It does the thinking, the fancy AI logic that's happening in the background, and then it responds with the answer. That way you're able to keep that source code behind closed doors. No one can right click inspect or view page source. They can't monitor your traffic on your server. They can only see the request that's being sent to your server server and the response that's received. That business logic, the core logic that's very important to your application that's protectable can be behind an API. That brings us to rule number two, authenticate. Your API can still be accessed by anybody and they could just be spamming requests and trying to figure out what's going on in the back end. Authentication is just another layer of security that gives you the ability to validate responses as they come in. Some very popular apps like Grammarly give you some basic functionality by being a guest user, but open up a lot more functionality when you sign up on their website. There are a variety of ways to protect your Chrome extension with authentication. One is by using sessions. You can also use a JWT and store your session details. After a user signs up on your Chrome extension and is able to log in, you store some kind of token client side. A user can use that token as part of any request that is sent to your API. And that way you can validate that request and confirm that this client is indeed authentic. The third rule in protecting your Chrome Chrome extension UI source code is mangling and compressing. So I consider this to be a light security measure because it's supposed to stop people from just being able to right click inspect or view page source. And then they see this jumble of JavaScript mess. They are discouraged from proceeding further. But in reality, um, there are plenty of ways for someone to be able to walk through the source code that's mangled and compressed and figure out what's going on and able to decipher the business logic within in that code. So that's why I call this a light security measure, but it is still a security measure that you can use to protect your source code further. The most recommended mangling and compressing library that people use is called Terser. Terser gives you the ability to minify, so removing all of the white spaces, renaming property names, and even in some cases renaming function names. Some of this can introduce bugs. Here you can see the before and after of what mangling and compressing can do for you, but as you can see in the documentation here, uh, this can be considered unsafe. Terser is really just performing a series of checks to replace function names and property names. There isn't deep analysis on your code, so it's not checking multiple files to see if one is using the other and then making sure all of the names are matching up. That responsibility is really upon you, the developer, to confirm that the code works even after the property names have been changed. So how do you protect your source code from prying eyes? What do you do to protect your UI code? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so I can continue making more of these. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Jerry.